Okay then, so yesterday we finished by talking about relays. <coughs> Sorry about that. So a relay, we have a bus bar, right? And I have a circuit breaker, because we always have a circuit breaker. Maybe it's a little tiny circuit breaker. Maybe it's only one amp. And it has a little tiny wire that goes to a little tiny switch. How much can this switch handle much current? No, it cannot. Because it's a little tiny wire, and that's going to go somewhere to a solenoid. And that grounds it out. And that is a complete circuit, right? Well, would be if I maybe drew a battery. There, because you got to have a fat wire going there, there a big wire going there. Okay, so that is a complete circuit. Battery to the bus bar. Bus bar across a circuit breaker. Circuit breaker to a switch. Switch to a... Also called a load. Back around. All right, then the relay will have a movable contact point that will connect a wire. So if we have a large thing, we're going to run a motor. So let's say that's a five amp circuit breaker because now we're running fat wire. And this goes off to a motor. Motor. Right? So that's what a relay will do. When these, shut up. Um, when the switch is closed, current flows through this, flows through the relay, creates what? Magnetic. Magnetic force that pushes this bar down, which connects that, causing the motor to turn. So did I run the motor current through the switch? No. No. So that is that. Um, so that's a relay. A solenoid is pretty much the same thing. It's just instead of moving this bar that connects to two wires or more wires, a solenoid will do movement. Like everybody's got electric door locks now in your car. Well, what makes the door lock go up and down? A solenoid. So it's the same thing, it's just a solenoid. All right, let's talk about selection of wire. This is where we'll spend the rest of our time. Selection of wire. See, I don't understand why sometimes the pins show up and sometimes they don't. Does anybody have an answer for that? Who suggested I use one note to begin with? Was it? Chris. Huh? It's Chris. Chris from the 309 Club. Oh, and he's not here. So he created a mess and now he's not here. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Selection of wires. Fun one. There's like a bunch of fun colors. Some fun color? We got glitter? What? Add a pen. pen. Oh, laser pointer. Oh, forgot about laser pointer. All right, laser pointer. There we go. There. I like that. Laser pointer. Okay. That right there. This can uh, go away. All right. Back to this. Selection of wire. So right now in lab, you know, you're just taking wire and you're just using whatever there is. And that's like, okay, well, I get what I get. Uh, but we can't necessarily do that in an airplane. Not necessarily. We can't, absolutely can't do that in an airplane. We have to select the correct wire. And that is actually a job that we're often called to do. So we want to make sure that we do a good job on that. So aircraft, let's talk about aircraft wire. Aircraft wire um, is sized by, is sized by by American wire gauge. Or AWG. AWG. Uh, it is based on based on the cross section of the wire. What does cross section mean? Diameter? The diameter. Could have said that. So it's based on the diameter, how fat the wire is. Not to shame the wire. 
So that is double lot, zero, zero. Double lot is about the largest size we use in aviation. So I suspect it is about the largest size. So double lot is going to be the big stuff. And 24 is about the smallest. So 24 gauge is about the smallest size. Can't just run down to uh, the National Aircraft Parts Store, NAPA, National Aircraft Parts Association. That's it, National. Yeah, Napa. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have to use approved wire. And when we talk about approved materials in an aircraft, wire, things like that, a lot of times it has to do with flammability. So you can't just go to the upholstery shop and have your aircraft upholstered. Uh, you have to have uh, certain flammability test standards depending on the aircraft. Um, I would imagine that that has a lot to do with why we only use certain wires because the flammability, if there is a fire, um, if you've got cheap wire, this is my thought, that you're going to have, a, a, when this stuff burns, it's going to give off probably far more toxic than what uh, approved wire is perhaps, I don't know. Um, so approved wire is generally mil spec. is generally mil spec. Or military, inspire. what? That does not inspire my confidence in this. Military specification. Yeah, so good great. Great. Well, was saying, yeah. yeah. Whoever, whoever won the lowest bid. That's who made it. The person who designed it, designed the mil spec, it's the person who made it is the problem. All right, so mil, M-I-L, it's actually supposed to be capital, M-I-L, uh, W-22759 is most common. It is, I've never seen anything other than white. So it is, I'll put it is usually, it is usually white. Even hot and brown? <coughs> yeah, just white. I have never seen this mil spec wire in any color other than that, which is not to say it doesn't come in that. It's to say I have never seen wire, mil spec wire in other than white. And if you look at the wire bundle in my, my Cessna aircraft and all the other aircraft I've worked on, the bundle is one solid color, and that color is? White. So you have 5, 10, 15, 20 wires in the bundle. Every single wire is? White. 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 Is that a 22759? Yeah. Is there something that get? Is there is there a rule? Black wire. Is there a rule of that? My wiring harness came with red, black, and white. I have never seen a rule that says that. I would default to the rule is it's got to be a mil spec wire, and when you order mil spec wire, people just tend to order it in in big giant spools, and I've never seen an option to get a different color. Which is not to say that some aircraft don't have a little bits of color in there, and those. So, a, a barbie plane out there. It's hot pink wire. Yeah. <laughs> so, but mil spec wire, this 2257, it's, to me, it's white. And if it's not white, it's suspect to me. These might not be. I would assume it's not. And it's really easy to tell <laughs> if it's mil 225, 22759 wire because it says right on it, mil W. 22759 or whatever it is. It is printed in green down the wire and in certain increments. Uh, usually white. Um, it has I have to this F L O R O P O L Y M E R fluoropolymer Teflon insulation. And as I said the other day, this stuff is tough. It's some tough stuff. When you have to strip it down, you do a lot of it, your hands get a little bit sore on it. Uh, it also is identified, the size is stamped on it. It's identifiable by stamping on the wire as to part number and size. So part number 
and size are stamped on the wire. If it's a factory wire, I'm not going to write this, often the um, component uh, is stamped on it, the, or I shouldn't say the component, but the circuit is identified by a number on there that you can look up in the wiring diagram. So whatever circuit is part of it, you just find the number on there, you know, what is, what is that number? And you look up in the book, oh, that's, you know, ring lights or something. That would be its, well, when it's stock, it's, yeah, going to come with this wire. Okay. Or what it's approved for. Now, remember, approvals are changing rapidly. So you can talk about the legacy aircraft, type certificated aircraft, but then it's a whole other topic when you talk about light sport aircraft because they're made under ASC certification, and I think they can use a different wire as long as it meets automotive specifications. But type certificated, I think we're still stuck with this wire, which is fine by me. Um, so the wire is, wire is copper with a coating of tin, silver, or nickel. Tin, silver, or nickel. Some older planes, some older planes used aluminum wire. And as I mentioned before, that's a problem. It corrodes. <clears throat> becomes a problem. Um, yeah. What's the purpose of the copper being coated? I was afraid you'd ask me that. Yeah, this is a Q&A question. Yeah. What, are my, what are my options? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> it's like one of them is like for conductivity. One of them is, is uh, for corrosion, corrosion resistance. resistance. Yeah. I think the I answer was corrosion resistance. Or strength is one of them. Not strength. I was going to say it's either for corrosion resistance, which is really what I felt it was, or I was thinking conductivity, but I kind of started to rule it out because you have a base of copper, and that's not a conductivity problem, so I was thinking corrosion. Because you want this stuff to last. All right, some older planes use aluminum wire. When you're dealing with aluminum wire, this would be a subset of aluminum wire. I should start using my numbers like they're written here so it's not confusing. One, uh, use caution when stripping. I, you should do this with every wire. Um, use caution when stripping wire. I have to put stripping wire just because I, you guys are making fun. Stripping wire uh, because individual strands can break. If nicked, if nicked. And two, aluminum wire. When replacing aluminum with copper, I think this might be a Q and A. When replacing aluminum with copper, a rule of thumb, which I'm not going to use. is to use is to use copper two gauges smaller so that would be a smaller or bigger number smaller, bigger, bigger bigger number We're going towards a double lot two gauges smaller provided wire meets oops amp requirements and we'll do, we'll cover amp requirements in just a second if you're me replacing a piece of copper I would throw out that rule of thumb and use the chart and figure out exactly what size wire it should be and then maybe cross check and make sure that I'm not going more than two sizes smaller than the aluminum and if the amperage chart said I could go say four sizes smaller aluminum, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably 
go too larger. Uh, let's see. B wire is selected for components is selected. I could just say wire is selected based on several factors. And I got, the, <coughs> excuse me, I got this from the q and I don't know why I wrote that, but I did. <coughs> Actually, I think I know why. Because it differs from what I agree with. So usually when I write per q and it's because I don't always agree with it. So one, allowable power loss. Two, permissible voltage drop. Three, current carrying capacity. Of the conductor. And type of load. Which is to say continuous or intermittent. Yeah. Is is the gauge still straight off? Like, is it still? Yeah, like a based off the diameter. So like fourteen gauge is fourteen gauge. Fourteen gauge is fourteen gauge. Fourteen. As far gauge as I know, is, yeah. Is X whatever. Diameter. Yeah. Yeah. So then, usually on the on the aluminum wires, they would bump it up. It, or I, I, I was a little bit. Uh, yeah. Or they would be the same, and you would just go. I don't have those charts anymore. They like they pulled them because they don't want us using aluminum wire. I maybe I shouldn't say that way. I've never seen that chart. Maybe they never made it and put it in AC 4313. But my assumption would be that, that yes, they used a chart, said I'm using aluminum wire. This is my run, this is my, you'll see it in a minute for copper. They used the same chart and said, oh, this is what we should use for aluminum. And you look at the exact same chart, but this is for copper and you follow the chart and you go, well, look at that. This one just happens to be two sizes smaller than that. So somebody came up with the rule of thumb, said, oh, you can just go two sizes smaller and that would work. And maybe that's how it got into the Q and A or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And two sizes smaller means the cross section is bigger. No, when I say smaller, I'm literally meaning two sizes smaller. So if there's a 20 gauge <clears throat> wire in there, you can put a 22 gauge copper wire. copper wire. Yes. Okay. Smaller means smaller. But if I want to talk gauge numbers, and I said which is smaller. A 20 gauge or an 18 gauge, don't say 18 because it's a little number. You say the 18 is a bigger wire, 20 is a smaller wire because of cross section area. Uh, okay, continuous or intermittent. So per AC 4313, 11-68 to be exact, paragraph D, intermittent. is a maximum of two minutes. You should do need to remember that. It was 11-68, uh, what was that? Delta. Delta. An intermittent load is a maximum of, what's an example of an intermittent load? Landing gear. Landing gear. If it takes you more than two minutes to get your landing gear down, you probably have a problem. <laughs> you have a problem. You said the starter two or the... If it takes you more than two minutes to get your airplane started, you have a problem. So yes, starter, landing gear. Flaps. Flaps, what I was thinking of. What is not intermittent? Your nav lights. Nav lights, landing lights. Radio. Re I mean, You're right, it's, always, on. it's always on. It's on. You transmit for lesson. Yeah, you transponder. But transponder. Well, almost all radio equipment be continuous. Coffee pot. What about the cigarette lighter? Yeah. Yes. Uh, intermittent uh, load is. It depends on what's plugged into it. Oh, yeah. 
I would assume if I was wiring it up that somebody's going to pull out the cigarette lighter and plug in a charging port of some sort. So I would, so I would make that continuous. If I did. For its intended purpose, which to put a cigarette lighter, yes, that is in the but Aircraft do not have cigarette lighters. They have cigar lighters. They have cigar lighters. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fact. Look it up. <laughs> if you look at any parts book, parts manual that I've ever seen, it is a cigar lighter. We don't want to be like that. No. There is a, there is a, there is a airworthiness directive on Cessnas to install a fuse into the cigar, cigar lighter. So, yes. Uh, continuous is then more than two minutes. What if it's two minutes exactly? Continuous. continuous. Maximum of two minutes. So if it's two minutes exactly, it would be intermittent. That's what the words say. Do you not want it to be more safe than sorry on that? Oh, I'm just saying if it was a test question that somebody asked me. So, I, don't, I just don't, I don't understand really like what, what, what are we doing, what's the difference thing of doing a gauge wire? Yes, if it's intermittent? I'm going to show you that a little bit. So you have to know that. So when you are doing these, for example, in the, sh in the sh lab, I was going to say shop, uh, you're running those motors and you're using... Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't let you run it for a real long time. Why? Because it'll burn out the little fry. Because these start to get hot and melt and will start a little fire if you run it too long. So we're running it as an intermittent, intermittent load. If we're going to run it continuous, we would need heavier, heavier gauge wire. All right. So according to the Q&A, um, you have to select wire based upon four facts. One is uh, allowable power loss. Two is permissible voltage drop. That is the same thing to me. Again. Allowable power loss and permissible voltage drop. It's the same thing. So when we get into what we're actually going to do with AC, we don't talk about a power loss. We're strictly going to talk voltage drop. Uh, current carrying capacity of the conductor. That is true. Um, we're going to look at how much a, so you need the allowable voltage drop, which will be dependent on how long of a run you're going to do. And then we're going to look at the current carrying capacity of the conductor and the type of load, continuous or intermittent. Um, let's see, something else we have to be considered is mechanical strength. <clears throat> mechanical strength. Although not the right answer on the Q&A, I actually wrote that. Although not the right answer on the Q&A. For some reason I wrote that. Not the correct answer on Q&A. There, mechanical strength. Um, wire that is too small will easily break. Wire that is too small can break. Um, out of 4313, I'm pretty sure. Um, using less than 20 gauge wire, 20 gauge wire, so less than, so 20 is fine, requires special consideration. Uh, I'll finish that. Consideration in clamping to prevent breakage. There are uh, rules in there. I didn't want to get into writing them all down. It's because you're not going to remember them. And the thing to remember is if I'm using something smaller than 20 gauge wire, I need to. Use <coughs> consideration. Where is this consideration written? The AC 4313. 4313. Um, I think what I did here, looking at my notes, wire is selected based on several factors. According to the Q&A, it's these factors. I think according to me, it's one, mechanical strength, two, allowable voltage drop. Either that I'm just repeating myself, or power loss if you want, which is the same thing. So that brings it into one item. 
And we're going to look at a chart here. That's 4313, table, table 11-6. We'll get to that in just a few minutes. Um, and we need, so allowable voltage drop because the resistance, resistance of wire will increase as, all right, so we got, that should be an I. One length increases, or cross section decreases. In other words, the longer the wire, more resistance. The skinnier the wire, the more resistance. I got to fix my outline. 14 volt system. In a 14 volt system, we can have 0 0.5 volt drop for continuous use and 1 volt drop. for intermittent. And I'll show you why you don't need to memorize that. Intermittent is defined as what? Intermittent is Continuous is more than, so a maximum of two. Max two minutes. All right, in a 28 volt system, and I guess it's worth noting right now, well, what about a 12 volt system? Some people say 12, some people say 14. It's the same system. Some people say 24 volts, some people say 28. Sometimes it's written 24, sometimes it's 28. It's the same thing. What's the power out of the wall? 110. There you go. He said 120, you said 110. Yes. <laughs> it's the same thing. 28 volt system, one volt continuous. Drop, one volt drop. Continuous. And two volts drop intermittent. <clears throat> Other considerations. Is it going to be in free air? Or is it going to be in a bundle? What is the operating temperature it's going to be in? So free air is the opposite of bundle. It's just one one wire going. If it's in a you know bundles can get pretty fat. So if you got a wire right there in the middle of the bundle. It's going to pick up the heat from everything around it. It can't dissipate its own heat. It's going to pick up other heat, so that's a consideration. So, all right, determining wire size. So, wait, are you, uh, what's the temperature you're talking about? Ambient temperature or the temperature of the wire that it can be? Um, ambient. Um, ambient. Ambient. So, is it running through wing out there where it's subject to cool air? Is it running inside next to the heating duct? Is it inside the nacelle engine compartment? So determining wire. Determining wire. All right, to select the correct wire, I'm not going to write a lot of notes here right now. So let's go to this. Let's see what I got. Oh, I forget all about that. 
That's a guarded switch, by the way. I don't know why I didn't. I thought I had that in my notes. I must have skipped over it. Uh, emergency equipment, things that can't be operated inadvertently, has a guard over it. So you have to flip the guard, then you flip the switch, and then when you put the guard back down, it automatically flips the switch back to the other state. Uh, we did cover that. Let me see. I don't think I want that one. I want to go to, let me see, 11-2. 11, there we go, 11-2. All right, so we are going to determine the correct wire size, and we are going to use chart 11-2. And if we look at 11-2, right over here on the side, it says conductor chart continuous flow. Can you see that? If you can't see it, I got a, I got a spot right here for anybody who can't see the board. So conductor chart, what kind of flow? Continuous, continuous which is? More than two minutes. All right. So that's chart 11-2. Did I put 11-3? I did. 11-3 is next. Yay for me. And that is for? All right. So first thing you have to do when you are selecting the correct wire is you need to select the correct chart. chart. Okay. Um, now, a minute ago I told you about the maximum voltage drops, which were for 14 volt is what? One volt continuous. Yeah. Half, half, half continuous. Okay, you don't have to remember this because it's there. right there. So for intermittent flow, for a fort. Let me see. I know it says it here somewhere. Fourteen is a one volt drop. Twenty-eight, two volt drop. Go back a chart. 14 is a? So for continuous, 14 is a half. 28 is? One. Don't have to memorize it. It's right there. All right, so these charts right here are designed to keep you from exceeding those numbers. So that check, taken care of. Um, it also assumes that the wire is in free air, if I'm not mistaken. Wire is in free air, not in a bundle or conduit. What's conduit? Piping. Piping. It's got to say it somewhere. Piping that's meant for electrical systems or electrical. Mm -hmm. Piping for electrical piping. systems. Um, maybe just says it 40 through 13. So um, free air, not in a bundle or conduit, and... In an environment, right here, based on conductor temperatures of 20 degrees Celsius. So, 20 degrees Celsius. So, you might write that down. Free air, these two charts, free air, 20 degrees Celsius. All right, let's do, uh, I'll write this. Use... They're tables, right? Charts. They're charts or tables? Get the right word in there. Figure. Figure. <coughs> 11, 2, and 11, 3. 11, 2, or 11-3. 11-3 is the intermittent, and this one is the continuous. We'll put an I or a C. Um, These figures keep you from exceeding max voltage drop. There we go, max voltage drops. Um, also, wire is in free air. Should put assumes. Assumes, A S S U M E, assumes that A, wire is in the free air, and also wire is in an environment of 20 degrees C or less. And that happens to be 68 degrees F. How many wires is considered a bundle? A 
A couple? I don't know if they define it. Would it just be more than one? Yeah. I don't know. Like, it's up to <laughs> what a bundle is, you know what I mean? Probably. Well, we're going to get into that where it shows how many in a bundle and how you figure that out. So you can just reverse engineer it and go, well, that's not a bundle. So you must know a couple of things before you select the wire. One, you must know the voltage, voltage of the system. Two, wire run in feet. Three, number of amps to be carried. All right, so our first example, <clears throat> and by the way, they do put examples in 4313. These charts can be rather complicated, difficult to understand. They're not intuitive, so they give you examples. You have to just use the example, reverse engineer what they're talking about, and go, okay, now I get it. So example one, we have a 150, 150 watt landing light that is to be installed in the wing, a distance so installed in the wing. So that is a distance from the bus to the light is 18 feet. The wire is not in a conduit or a bundle. The aircraft has a 28 volt <coughs> system. Which chart do I want to use? Continuous. Yeah. Continuous. OK. 11-2, continuous. All right, What's, what, what do we need to know here? Voltage. voltage. <clears throat> I said we have to know a couple of things. We have to know one, voltage. What's my voltage? 28 volts. 28 volts. Uh, we need to know the wire running feet. That is? 18 feet. And we need to know the number of amps to be carried. Uh, well, shoot, that wasn't given to us, so I guess we just... We give up. We give up. There's no way to know. We'll just run 24 gauge. Five point. Double lot. Five point. We'll just run double lot. Whatever. <laughs> How many amps? 5.4 amps because 120, 120 watts? 150 watts, whatever, whatever I said. 150 watts divided by 28 equals 5.4 amps. All right. So we're going to use the chart, follow the five, this, like I said, they're not necessarily intuitive. So up here it says amps, and these lines go sideways. So right there is five. I circle it. You have to take my word for it, because I can't draw and enlarge this at the same time, and I can't make this any bigger. So five. So here's this line right here, five, that goes diagonal down to my left, your left too. Everybody see that so far? Everybody's with me. So the first thing we did is we found... Amperage, and that is the diagonal line going in, down. And the next thing we can do is we can find the feet right here. I'm going to have to enlarge a little bit. It says wire length in feet. And we can see up here voltage. So we are going to have this column, wire run in feet. So we're going to come down until we get to the 18. Well, we have 16, 20. So 18 is going to be? Right, right, right. This kind of... Right there. Right there, okay. So I gotta now get rid of that. So I'm gonna go 18 is, I lost it. 18 is right here. 18, and we follow that 18 out until we get to the five. So 18, nope. Was that there? 18, 18, 18. Until we hit that five. Almost takes two fingers. Nope, back one. Here's the five. Yeah, five? Yep. Right there. Yep. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right there. Yeah, it's hard to do. So here's the five right here, coming down, coming down, coming down. It's like easier on paper. Five, so, yeah. You're meeting the diagonal? You cross them both up together. There. Can you see the red line? Mm -hmm. So we need 20.5. And here's 18 right here. So then the wire size is what you use. The very there. So you see that? How I got to this point right here. X, X. Everybody got, see how I got to that point? Okay, if you didn't, I need you to say so right now. Don't wait till I get all the way done and move on to another subject. Go, can you do one of those? Anyway, which is fine, but just say it now. Okay, so five amps, 18 feet. Well, wait a minute. That right there is an eight and a 10. So that's nine feet, right? No, but that's on 
Oh, that's on a 14 volt chart. So I'm over here on the 28 volt. What if it's a 24 volt system? Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Oh, I don't make it 24 volt. Um, same thing. So I come down here until I got to 18, went over until I intersected the 5 amp, got to this. Didn't quite line up. Didn't quite line up. That's okay. Doing the best I can. And I roll down here. And it's somewhere between 22 and 20. Which one is the smaller of the two? 22. So which one am I going to want to do? 20. I'm going to go 20. So it is a, huh? Double lot. Double lot, yes. So then in that case, you need to take special consideration with that large. No, because it was less than 20. Oh, less than 20. Okay, looking down here at the bottom of the chart, what does 1 slash 0 mean? It's 1 0. 2 slash 0. Double lot. Double lot. Zero, 0 Then it's 0 0 0, then four zeros. All right? Triple and. What's the diameter of a double lot? Can you give an estimate? Just a half inch? Google it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm curious. I know how shotgun game works. Yeah, it's the same size as a shotgun. Oh, yeah. Are they, I wonder, are they. Well, yeah, is, it the same, is the wire diameter the same size as like double lock shot? Probably not. What is a double lock shot? Uh, or whatever, I don't know what that is. It's the size of the It's 9mm 38 caliber. But the gauge of a shotgun is based off of how many lead balls it takes to make a pound. Okay. You got to test tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the shotgun's not on it. <laughs> what? All right, give me another example. What do you got? Just throw something out. How many volts we got? Uh, 200. Huh? 100. Either 14 or 28. Uh, 14. 14. 14 volt system or 12. 13. Uh, how many feet? 45. 45, 45 feet. Yep. And how many amps are we going to run through it? 50. 50 amps. <laughs> okay. That's, he's just trying to get <laughs> All right. Hey, you know what? That's what he wants to do. So see if the chart will handle it. Maybe it won't. Maybe it's out. Okay. So first thing I do is I'm going to come up here to amps and I'm going to find 50. there's 50. So it's Ooh. this line right here. In my example, mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't specify, so I just kept it on this one. That's a good question. Um, I could have asked, what is this thing running? Continuous. Whatever is <laughs> continuous. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> it is the um, massager in the pilot's seat. <laughs> It's yeah, that's not <laughs> so that is gonna, and it has a heating element in it. That's oh, the 50 terrible. amps. So, okay. You have a question? Uh, no, I. It's it's about the wire gauge. He's asked about the size. I pulled up a chart for it. It's like almost three eighths. It's it's yeah, it's nine point two. Okay, so 50 amps. What's my next thing? I got to find the voltage. So I'm going to use this first chart right here for 14, and we went 45 feet. So I actually have a 45 right on there, so life is easy. Oops. Life just got hard again. Right there. So 45 right there. I have a line at 45. I could follow it across. Follow across, follow it across. It hits right here, and I'm going to do what? Go down. Down. It's right in between here. It's right there, so three use gauge. a three gauge. Use yeah, two. Napa sells three gauge, so. Not okay. Um, you can work it backwards, too. Like, what is the, and I think some of the Q&A questions do something like that. Um, what is the maximum amperage like the max amps an 18 gauge wire can handle if it's running 20 feet. 
So now you're just going to run it a little bit backwards. So on a 28 volt system. So I would go 28 volt system, go to the 20 line, which is right there, 20, and come across. And so I'm going to do it this way. See where your 18 would be. And here's my 18, which comes to right here. And that is between these two. So that comes to right there. So what's the maximum amperage I could run on that? Like eight or something like that. Mm -hmm. Seven. Seven. Well, there, there's numbers in between because amperages don't come in specifics. So there's 7, 8, 9, and 10 in there. 7, 8, and 9. So what would be about the maximum amperage? About 8. Yeah. About, eight about 8 amps is the maximum you could handle on that. Assuming that it's continuous, continuous and in free air. Very good. 20 degrees Celsius. 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, okay. What is what is the max length of number eight wire? Max length of number eight wire that can be used for a twenty-eight volt system at fifty amps. What is the maximum length? So I want to know length. So what am I going to do? First thing. Find 50 amps. Amps. Okay. Here's 50 amps. Somebody said find 50 amps. Well, that doesn't hurt. We'll identify that. What's next? Now do what? Eight gauge wire. Okay, eight is right here. So I bring it up. Here's my eight right there. Now what? All the way to the left and 30 feet. What if the max temperature now is 50 degrees Celsius? Jesus Christ, that's odd. That is a Probably the engine is probably good. Yeah. Screw it, buy a new plane? Yeah. <laughs> buy one that doesn't get that hot. Double lot, baby. Yeah, double lot, <laughs> double lot, 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 double L2 equals 254.5, that's a constant, times L of 1 divided by 234.5 plus T2, where L1 is length of wire calculated. L2 equals new max length. <coughs> and T2 equals wire temp. I believe in Celsius. And you should commit this to memory, right? No. Where did I get that? It's right here down at the bottom of the page. Nice. <clears throat> L1 is based on the conductor temperatures of 20 degrees, or, or length, sorry, is a determined length. L2 at higher conductor temperature. Use formula where T2 is estimated conductor temp in Celsius. Those other numbers <clears throat> are constants. The 254... 0.5 and 234.5. So going back to our maths problem, L2 equals 254.5. So L2 equals 254.5 times L1, which is what? <coughs> what do we calculate it at? 30 feet. Times 30 divided by 234.5 plus what? 50. So I got 
7635 divided by 284.5, which equals 26.8. Therefore, what is the maximum length we can now have? 26.8 is now 26.8 feet. We good? Yeah. Okay. So if we wanted the same length of wire, that would mean we have to increase the, the gauge? Yes. If that didn't work and you said, I've got to have third, well, so what you do is you figure this out, and if it's like a nav light out in the wingtip, you have to shorten the wing by four feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you got to put the, the wingtip light four feet inboard. Well, yeah, <laughs> that was the longest wire I could get. Okay, break time.